players have been given the thumbs up. Looks like they have their opening hands. All right, and good luck, everyone. This is the rubber match. Is he going to be on the play? Looks like he has a hand that has thoughts he's in it. Five of the eye tyrant. Here we go. Okay. Thoughts he's take a peek. Evan Smith, what did you keep? We got Den of the Bugbear, Ramanap Ruins, Spikefield Hazard. Ooh, just the one early threat, and that Kumano faces Kakazan to skewer the critics and a Bone Crusher Giant. So I would say potentially this uh, Kumano hitting the bin, potentially this Bone Crusher as, you know, maybe it's a two for one if Zimbruni has a uh, Blood Tithe Harvester in hand right. uh, or even a Misery Shadow that he wants to play on turn two. So could want to clear that Bone Crusher out of the way. Yeah, I think it's defensible to take either the Kumano or the Bone Crusher, but it does just depend on what he's got in hand. Um, like you said, if you take the Kamano, you essentially take a lot of the wind out of his sails, but he has the chance to draw uh, one mana threat to replace it. At this point, the Kamano, without another creature, is not that threatening. It's a 2-2 over the course of a few turns, you know. All right, does take the Bone Crusher Giant, so Evan Smith draws what looks like a mountain, plays Kamano, faces Kakazan. All right, let's see if you were right. Let's see if he's got one of these two drops to deploy. Oh, just a tap land with Haunted Ridge, so no two drop at the ready. Doesn't look like he has a third land. That could be disastrous for him. And there's a play with fire off the top for Evan Smith, so not going to be able to get any value out of the second chapter of this powerful saga. Yeah, but can just play a land and then just go for some burn spells upstairs. Doesn't yeah. have to do much of anything. Could even just play Spikefield Hazard tap. Not a whole lot of targets for that yeah, one I damage. I think that's what Evan Smith was thinking about. And with the Ramanap Ruins and Den of the Bugbear, I think playing Spikefield Cave here makes a lot of sense. All right, Bagzine Bruni's way. Let's see if we can pick up a third mana source. Find Swamp. The perfect third mana source here. We're going to get Fable the Mirror Breaker, and now all of his mana woes are gone. Yeah. Chapter 1 makes a goblin. We're going to play with Fire Rip, but Chapter 2 is where the money's at, discarding those cards and turning them into real potential threats. We've seen this Rakdos deck plays so much differently when you put it under early pressure versus when you don't. When they can cleanly play their Fable the Mirror Breaker on turn 3, not have to worry about their life total being under a ton of duress, uh, and get to pick and choose, get value out of the removal spells uh, in the way they want to. The deck looks very good, and that is what seems to be happening here, though. A big turn for Evan Smith yeah. with Vision of Pyromancer, plus an attack for two, plus a skewer of the critics. Zine down to ten. He stole my lines. I was <laughs> going to say all that. All right, back scene, Bruni's way at ten life after what seemed like a relatively safe start. Discard two cards, the Fable the Mirror Breaker, the Dreadbore, a little inefficient, but Lily on the Veil is really the, the more expensive edict. Not so good. We're going to go for at least one removal yeah. spell with Dread Boar. I think Zine really wanted another land here to be able to double spell. Not sure if he found the land, but does have a fatal push along with the Dread Boar. Okay. So going to get the, the double spell anyway and deal with both of these creatures. All right, so we drew Bone Crusher Giant. My guess is we'll go for Stomp Skewer after this gets pushed. That's going to essentially just do a lot of guaranteed damage. If you play Bone Crusher Giant, there's a chance it gets invalidated in combat by something like Graveyard Trespasser, and you just kind of miss out on that two damage. Yeah. And that could be invaluable with Dinner the Bugbear hanging out and Ramanap Ruins. And then we're sitting there with our opponent on five life. If we make that play, four mana in play. A fifth mana will let us either activate Den or Ramanap Ruins. You know, we've got the Bone Crusher at hand. Okay, looks like Evan Smith going to play a little slower maybe wants the option to stomp a creature here. And yeah. I do believe there is a Blood Tithe Harvester in Bruni's hand. And you also have the guaranteed Fable flip, so it makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense you want to get full value out of stomp. All right, here comes the Harvester. Here comes the Blood. Still no fourth land for Zine Bruni here, but... Could, could main face pop the Blood token looking for it, you know? Yeah, relatively stable on the battlefield and still at 10, so... Life total not under extreme duress yet, but is going to really want to be able to develop a clock here. Does crack the blood looking for a land and finds it. That is a blight step pathway. All right, going to play yeah. it on red to yeah. give him access to a second red. And we're going to go back Evan Smith's way since these creatures both have summoning sickness. Here comes Stomp on the Blood Tithe Harvester. Mm. Says I'd rather deal with the bigger creature, the one that can trade with the Bone Crusher Giant, because if you don't have anything to copy with Reflection... It's the weaker creature. Yeah, it's just a 2-2. Two -two. All right. Uh, Mountain is drawn for Evan Smith. Can go land, activate Den, or just play Bone Crusher, but can't double spell. Needs a six mana to be able to skewer plus stomp, or skewer plus play the Bone Man. I think I like just playing the Bone Crusher, because next turn, if you draw a land, you can go Ram Nap Ruins plus skewer. If you draw a spell, you can probably get the skewer on. 
Okay. All right. He likes your line. There's Bone Man in the land. This is a little bit weak against a Liliana plus, but we've already seen him discard one. So this is bad. Bad, bad. We're going to make a Blood Tithe Harvester, and then we're going to make a copy of it, and that's going to kill the Bone Crusher Giant. And we have perfect information. We know that the last card in hand is Skewer the Critics, and that's a sorcery. Yep. So the copy of yeah, that. Second blood. We need to leave both bloods on the battlefield. Be able to give minus four, minus four to the Bone Crusher. And yeah, Evan Smith may be getting punished for not taking the more aggressive start aiming burn spells at the face line. Though Ramonet Burn's a pretty good draw here. Yeah, and this is going to deal uh, two damage from sacking the land. And then we have Skewer the Critics that we can play uh at sorcery speed and we have the option to kill either creature or go face we're going face, face. thanks to the ray map ruins we have a race upstairs so bruni at five now that ramen ruins can get him to three and so one more burn spell uh can end this game bruni really wants to find a shielded here and start getting some life with a fifth land can immediately gain two life with one of those blood tokens oh. there's another source of life gain in graveyard trespasser i think that will be uh, incredibly helpful as well. Yeah, so we're, uh, Trespassers are going to come down. We're going to eat something out of the graveyard and gain a life. And honestly, Graveyard Trespasser, to me, is one of the reasons why Rakdos is so good against aggro decks. If you try to interact with Trespasser, you have to discard a card. And if you don't interact with it, you know, it just eats the graveyard and gains some life. It's just a very annoying card to play against. Yeah, uh, and one of the cards that really typifies these Rakdos mid-range decks and uh, versatile across the spectrum. Is very good against control decks because it's difficult to answer. Good against aggro decks with that life gain. Uh, and here it looks to be putting the clamps on Evan Smith and locking up the first game in favor of Zine Bruni. All right, so we're going to copy Graveyard Trespasser. That's going to come in, eat something in the graveyard, and probably gain a life. Um, no spell was played, and so day is going to become night. The first Graveyard Trespasser will transform. The second one will try to transform, but unfortunately for tokens, they don't have a backside. It's going to be stuck as just the front graveyard trespasser, I believe. Yeah. Should be that way, but I think that'll be good enough for Zine Bruni. All right, going back Bruni's way. David comes knight. All right. So now we have one graveyard trespasser and one graveyard glutton. Friends forever. This, if there are three creatures to exile, this is 15 damage. Let's see, I know that there's only one in the graveyard right now from Zine Bruni that, uh, Bullet Tithe Harvester, and I don't think there's anything on the other side. Oh. I guess even with one creature, we can just copy the graveyard Glutton. Now we have two four fours, two three power creatures, that's 14. We'll, only one exile creature gets us the 15th point. Okay. But there but, is a blocker, yeah. there's, there's that down in the bugbear. Now we could activate, and if we have a land, we can activate Hive of the Eye Tarn as well. Yeah, any land, any untapped land, any removal spell, I think will end this first game. Another benefit of Come On On Face. Ooh, there's another creature. Is that good enough? Okay. Now, looks like our land in hand is just another Hive. So let's swing in and see if Evan can make it to blocks. This is 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah. Evan is just going to pack it in. Sees no way out. The extra life points from the Graveyard Trespasser and Glutton. Just a little too much for his burn spells to handle. Drew a few too many lands. The early thought sees stripped him of uh, one of the Bone Crusher Giants, which could have been, you know, very good uh, for dealing with those Fable the Mirror Breakers. But... Yeah, just not uh, an explosive, uh, explosive enough of a start here for Evan Smith. Definitely needs to be the deck that gets ahead. Gave Bruni a little bit too much time to set up and use mana that he might not have otherwise had in order to dig out of his early mana screw when he was not making those land drops. Uh, so Bruni takes game one and is now one game away from qualifying for the Season 3 Regional Championship in Dallas. We'll take a look at both player sideboards, starting with Zine Bruni. He's got a Pit the Needle, got a Liliana of the Veil, a Rending Volley, two Coligans Command, one Abraid, one Duress, one Necromancia, three Ritual of Soot, two Extinction Event, one Reckoner Bankbuster, and one Sky Sovereign Console Flagship. Honestly, 
not a lot that I really like. I think you want some of the sweepers, but I'm not yeah. sure if you want all of them because this is a deck that doesn't think rely on its creatures to get over the finish line. It has enough yeah. burned to mm -hmm. finish you. So I like drawing one sweeper, but the second one might be a liability. I mean, as you could see in that game, the spot removal is good. And when the spot removal is good and the, there aren't like 30 plus creatures in the opponent's deck, I don't really think you need that many sweepers. So I could see a couple coming in. I don't really like Extinction of it that much. And Ritual of Soot kills all of your stuff too, except for Shieldred. So I think that there's some chance that because of all the burn spells and because many of the creatures just cost like one mana and you have to play all your Fatal Pushes and Stomps early, the, the sweepers just don't feel like they're necessary. Yeah. Uh, Smith Cyborg, we have one Goblin Chain Whirler, four Rending Volley, four Obliterating Bolt, one Roiling Vortex, two Roast, one Hazard the Fervent, one Chandra Torch of Defiance, one Red Cap Melee. I definitely like the Chandra, the Hazard, the Roiling Vortex can be quite good against Shieldred and Graveyard Trespasser. Yeah. Also just a card that the Rakdos deck has trouble removing. Yeah, they can't kill it, so it's just guaranteed one damage every turn. Yeah. I like the two Roasts as an answer to Shieldred, that's a really yes, important card to absolutely. answer. I also sneakily like the Goblin Chain Whirler. That is a creature that attacks very well into all of Rakdos' creatures outside of Shieldred. Good attacks point. into Bone Crusher Giant. Attacks into Graveyard Trespasser. Uh, so definitely a, a worthwhile threat. It also often survives Fatal Push mm -hmm. and always survives Stomp. All right, quick question on the wizard side of things. Are there any copies of Meatball in the deck? No. This is a deck that has so many red one-drops. Mm. You need to play all red uh, red lands. So okay. his mana base is 10 basic mountain, 4 Ramnap Ruins, 4 Den of the Bugbear, 1 Soken Zan, and 1 Spike Field Hazard. Okay. So still a lot to do with the mana, but that game was kind of picture-perfect Flood, right? Even though we had Den of the Bugbear and Ramnap Ruins, those are like Flood protection, but they're not exactly ideal mm. in your mana expenditure. But if uh, if his if he had you know not Mulligan and had one more one drop in that hand you know even something like a, a Monastery Swift Spear or a D two Lava Runner I think that game could have changed around, uh, turned around you get a little bit more damage in the early game those Ramen Up Ruins might have finished Zine Burning off yeah the thought is also much worse when your hand's just like all redundant one drops or whatever okay so uh, if I'm not mistaken I feel like uh, the uh, the skewer the critics got sighted out i saw him thumb thumb them all to the front when he was looking through his deck so those probably not in the deck anymore reasonable one to bring out seeing as it's you know dependent on you not only having creatures in the battlefield which is the restriction from wizard's lightning but being able to connect with them so that's the one that is the that the raptors deck is most likely to be able to turn off right and he did multiple times that game so all right, both players here shuffling up for game number two. Zim Bruni, Rectus Midrange, currently undefeated on the day. Our first seed in the tournament only picked up a draw, smashed the last round for first seed, and cruising. One game number one in relatively easy fashion. Big shout out to Graveyard Trespasser for padding the life total and making sure a flurry of burn spells was going to get the job done. But Evan Smith going to be on the play here for game number two with that very explosive and powerful mono red deck. Oh, no lands in the opener. That one's going to be sent back. Unfortunate. So, yeah. <laughs> Those are pretty mountains, but you got to draw them. Yep. And Is that Arabian at... Nights? Couldn't tell. I would doubt no, it. No, not Arabian Nights. What is yeah. It? I got to check. I, I can't remember. I don't, I don't remember the picture in my head. Ice Age? Ice Age. That's what it is. It's a respectable choice. Take a look at Zine Bruni's hand. I think I see a couple of lands towards the back. The ritual set at the front. And mm -hmm. kept Misery Shadow in. We talked about this earlier. You know, I don't, I don't think Misery Shadow or Liliana deserve to be in against these aggro decks. But he keeps leaving them in and he keeps smushing them. So, who knows? Yeah. Misery Shadow is nice as a cheap card that can just trade as a Grizzly Bear. And then, if you have it late in the game, it's gigantic. We saw it attack into a Baneslayer Angel against oh, Zora's Control. Interesting. Zine was taking the max time to Mulligan, was tanking it over, and decided to take a Mulligan right before Evan has finished shuffling. And now we're going to be seeing both players on six. Well, at least he's being charitable here in the second game after keeping seven against the six-card hand in game one. Mm-hmm. And Evan Smith uh, waiting on uh, Bruni to shuffle before he takes a look at his next hand. Wonder what Bruni was looking at. Because I think I saw two lands, a Dreadbore, you know, a Misery Shadow, and maybe some more expensive things on the draw. Seemed like a reasonable hand, but 
Rudy deciding to mulligan aggressively into something better, which does make sense when you're on the draw against such a hyper-aggressive deck. You know, you can't keep the medium hands. You're just going to get run over by any good draw. All right. I believe both players are going to keep this. Evan already put one on the bottom, and Team Bruni does too. We're off to the races. Evan Smith going to be on the play here for game number two. Down a game against this Rakdos mid-range deck, but maybe in a good position to take this one on the play. That is definitely an Ice Age Mountain, the classic Jim Davis. <laughs> All right, we just have just a Haunted Ridge back Evan Smith's way. Just a tap land here. That's great news if you're Evan Smith because that means that you can play more creatures here and nothing's dying on the first couple turns. Attack for two, and you have to imagine this is going to be light up the stage. Light it up. All right, takes one from the Raymi app, reveals Lava Runner and Wizards Lightning, the perfect pair. <laughs> Literal perfect pair off the top. That is a combo. Zine Bruni brought in Pithy Needle. He must be terrified of a Chandra after sideboard. They don't know each other's deck lists, and Chandra uh, Dress to Kill is exceptional in these spots, especially on the play. Might also want to turn off those Ram Yeah, lists. or Den of the Bugbear, too. Yeah. Yeah, it has some uses for sure. All right, here it comes Get to Lava Runner. And here comes Wizard's Lightning to give it haste and deal three. Yeah, got a Wizard's Lightning before combat to give the Lava Runner haste. Okay, and now in response to the Wizard's Lightning, we're going to go a braid on a Monastery Swiss Spear. So a one mana pump spell, not going to, or one mana burn spell, not going to get the job done to save it. But three damage to face, pumping the other Prowse creature, and now enabling it to Lava Runner, turning it on and giving it haste. And we're going to see a big attack here and maybe a play with fire too. Yeah, Evan Smith contemplating whether or not he wants to play the play with fire, force through more damage earlier, maybe save it. For having more options. Well, you can save it for a Fable that comes down this turn. Yeah, and then or can... Blood Tithe Harvester. Yeah. I kind of like playing it. The extra damage is pretty good there. And you want to scry for a land so you can play Chandra next turn. There's definitely some merit to playing it. All right. I think he might be getting punished since there's a well, Fatal Push on the Lava Runner. So if it was on the Switch Spear, it would look worse. Okay. Backsmith's Way. Doesn't find the land, but does have a Wizard's Lightning. Can go attack and cast Wizard's Lightning before damage to get extra from the Prowse. Yep. All and right. That's what it is. But this is why Zane Bruni fatal pushed when he did, right? Oh, here we go. Power Word Kill going to take it down. So Wizard's Lightning three to the face. Down it's going to get run into seven. We've got kind of like four damage at hand. If Chandra, if you'll probably get at least one activation. And you've got the play with fire. You got two out of this Ram and F runes eventually. Oh! That's a shield. I'm skilled, Wasp. I'm skilled. You know what doesn't deal with Shieldred? A Chandra minus three. Yeah. Not a whole lot deals with Shieldred in red decks. That's why we play Roast. Yep. And, and we're happy to do it. With two Roasts <laughs> in the sideboard, doesn't have one in hand, and this Shieldred will quickly run away with the game. Might be getting Zine Bruni to the regional championship. Oh, yeah. The Shieldred un unchecked against an aggro deck. Going up to eight life. Has Mutavolt to block. Has Shield Red to play defense if he wants. Doesn't even have to attack. And we're going to see this Pithy Needle. We'll get a confirmation on what's being named. My guess, Ramy Nap Ruins. But could be afraid of something else. We'll see. Could be going for the the flex on you. Name my own mutable play. <laughs> Name you are already dead. <laughs> Name I'm going to the regional championship. Yeah. Ha ha. I'll name Abandon Hope. All right. Chandra Dress to Kill. So a card not even in Evan Smith's deck, if I'm not mistaken. But a card that is strong enough against his archetype that you usually see out of these red decks that, uh, you know, maybe it should be in the deck. I, I love Chandra Dress to Kill. Would be a nice sideboard card for matchups like this. For sure. All right, we have a Hazrat that's oh, got to go to the bottom. When draws the both of the four drops before land four. All right. And well. then there is the land four, but this Chandra, not doing a whole lot. We can we can plus it, but then the Mutavault will team up with Shieldred to take it out. Yeah. I think if you're Evan, though, you're just trying to... Uh, prevent some damage as much as you can. Yeah. Cast not casting it is essentially conceding. And at this at this pace, at least Zine Bruni has to expend six damage to go at the Chandra. Yeah. Put Bruni down to four. Draw a card. Bruni will go back up to six. We're gonna attack down the Chandra. Ooh, we have Den of the Bugbear, so we could go Den. Uh, oh, we go Token plus Shieldred at Chandra and Den at face for three. But this is fine too. It's less mana, so you can play Fable out of hand. Yep. Yeah. Has a pathway left in hand. It's going to keep that one to be able to pitch to the second chapter. Um, and now you've got a blocker here for this Kumano that's about to get to chapter three. 
All right. Well, looks like Zim Bruni is on the precipice. He had a couple turns here where if he had drawn a roast, he could have gotten back into this, but it is we're running out of those turns. This is why we play four roasts instead yeah. of obliterating bolt. I'm way more afraid of shoulder than old growth troll, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, Bruni gonna go to eight here and now gets to discard two cards of the fable, go up to twelve, and I think Sheesh. that will lock up this game. Yeah. Only okay. discards one. A, sh a show of strength. It looks like a Sky Sovereign drawn for turn. So another big fatty bone fatty. The barge is coming through. <laughs> it's bow time. Oh no, he got stuck in the canal again. Not again, 2020. <laughs> Alright, here comes an attack for six. No card uh -huh. in hand for Evan. We're going to get a treasure. And life total precariously low for Evan after that. And every draw step, he takes two more. Yeah, and Bruni not even caring about having defenses here. He's at a high enough life total that it's getting this game over time. Well, actually, Drew a nice one. We're going to attack for one. It's going to put Bruni down to nine, and we drew light at the stake. Okay. If there was we anything going to <gasps> Finds the roast? We get to kill the shoulder? No. Do we have a game still? No, Shaman plus Mutavolt crew the boat. Dang. All right, Shaman plus crew the boat's going to do it. And yeah. Evan really needs to find that roast one turn ago, I think, and we might have had something interesting. All right. Well, that's going to do it. Zine Bruni defeats Evan Smith 2-0 and Rakdos midrange going to be making the finals. Two players here qualifying for the regional championship. Both players who make the finals will get there, and it looks like Rakdos is going to be at least one of them. 